Bill Shine is leaving the White House to go senior advise the president's re-election campaign. President Donald Trump, in a statement released by the White House, said Shine will be totally involved in the 2020 campaign. Shine says he's looking forward to that, and spending more time with my family. More from Gabby or Trump on Paul Manafort as he heads to prison, I feel very badly for Paul Manafort, I think it's been a very, very tough time for him, he told reporters this morning. Asked about the potential for a pardon for Manafort, Trump said, I haven't discussed it. More from Caitlin Opriskill on Michael Cohen. Trump called the lawsuit that Cohen announced against the Trump Organization yesterday the most ridiculous suit I've ever seen, adding that he had a bad lawyer in Cohen. On the House anti-hate speech vote, I thought it was disgraceful, because the Democrats have become an anti-Israel party. They've become an anti-Jewish party. The step back. Politico magazine's Tim Alberta in Minneapolis, The Democrats' Dilemma, DS but the cautionary tale offered by years of vicious Republican infighting, Democrats are dangerously close to entering into their own fratricidal conflict. On matters of both style and substance, the fractures within this freshman class are indicative of the broader divisions in a party a long overdue for an ideological reckoning. And Omar isn't shying away from it. I am certainly not looking to be comfortable, and I don't want everyone necessarily to feel comfortable around me, she told me, a mischievous smile tugging at her lips. I think really the most exciting things happen when people are extremely uncomfortable. Minnesota Representative Dean Phillips, a friendly soul and consensus builder by nature, is among those feeling a bit uncomfortable. Amid a discussion of Omar and Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, he complained, suddenly an entire party is being branded by the perspectives of two of its members who represent 1% of the caucus. Politico magazine The New Majority Zach Montalero, House passes sweeping election reform bill, the bill, known as H. R.1 in depth of For the People Act by Democrats, was approved on a party line 234 to 193 vote. The measure makes far-reaching changes to the country's electoral and campaign finance system, along with ethic reforms that targeted President Donald Trump and his administration. The legislation includes a national expansion of early voting, redistricting reform, making Election Day a federal holiday, automatic voter registration and stricter disclosure rules for a bevy of political activities. One particular ethics provision would mandate presidential and vice presidential candidates to publicly disclose 10 years of tax returns and not to Trump's refusal to do so despite decades of precedent. The bill has little chance of becoming law in the face of stiff opposition from the GOP-controlled Senate. Politico Jobs Report AP's Christopher Rubiger, U. S. adds just 20k jobs, unemployment dips to 3. APCT, the sharp slowdown in hiring which might have been worsened by unseasonably cold weather, came after employers had added a blockbuster 311,000 jobs in January. Still, the pullback comes amid signs that growth is slowing because of the weaker global economy, a trade war between the United States and China, and signs of caution among consumers. Businesses stepped up their competition for workers and raised average hourly pay 3. 4% from a year earlier, 
the largest gain in a decade. AP Reuters Phil Stewart, U.S. Air Force Secretary Wilson to resign, eyes return to academia, U. S. Air Force Secretary Heather Wilson, long considered a top candidate to become the next Secretary of Defense, has decided to resign after about two years. She plans to step down on May 31st if the University of Texas Board of Regents approves her selection to be president of University of Texas at El Paso. Reuters The Cover Crew WAPO's Bob Costa, NBC's Casey Hunt New York Mag's Olivia Nuzzi and NPR's Ahi Sharasco on the cover of Washington Life's Young and the Guest List Edition. The cover quite the exchange. Joe Scarborough on Morning Joe with John Hick and Looper. Hick would not say whether he was a capitalist. Scarborough, well, would you call yourself would you call yourself a proud capitalist? Hick and Looper, oh, I don't know. You know, again, the labels, I'm not sure any of them fit. But I do believe that, you know. That ability to look at, you know, climate change and figure out how are we really going to create a sense of urgency and get people together. Scarborough, right. Let me ask you just I'll break it down even more. Do you consider yourself a capitalist? Hickenlooper, well, again, the labels, you know, I'm a small business person. So that part of the system that you would call capitalist, I get it. I understand it. Dot. I worked very hard. Dot. You know, when you open your own business, you know, when we first signed the lease in Lower Downtown Denver to build our brew pub, it was one dollar per square foot per year. Scarborough, right? Dot. So do you consider yourself a capitalist, and does capitalism work? Hickenlooper, well, I think I, I don't look at myself with a label. And I certainly think that small business is part of the solution. I think right now the way capitalism is working in the United States, it's not doing what it once did. Video What's on the President's Mind at Real Donald Trump at 8.58 a. M colon women's unemployment rate is down to 3.6%, was 7.9% in January, 2011. Things are looking good. Presidential message for International Women's Day Matthew Choi, Trump and Cohen in a Twitter tussle over pardon claims celebrate International Women's Day, no one rises to the top alone. The New Women Rule newsletter is a must-read for women who seek to inform, empower, connect, and inspire each other. Sign up today and hashtag rule with us. More on Ilhan Omar She had a poor choice of words. Ilhan Omar's constituents grapple with her remarks, by MIT Smith Smith and Matt Ferber in Minneapolis. Across Minnesota's snow-covered 5th Congressional District a bright blue bastion of independent coffee shops, Somali malls, and proudly progressive politics the voters who overwhelmingly elected M.S. Bomer in November were conflicted about her recent remarks, sometimes along surprising lines. Ms. Omar's comments, and the weeks of backlash, raised questions about tolerance and free speech in a place that consistently elects a diverse slate of politicians, as well as concerns about the future of a carefully crafted rapport between leaders of the area's sizable Jewish and Muslim communities. NYT Axios Alexei McCammond, White House leaked to House Dems on Jared and Ivanka's clearance, from a White House source. The House Oversight Committee has obtained documents related to Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump's security clearances that the Trump administration refused to provide, 
according to a senior Democratic aide involved in handling the documents. The White House this week rejected the committee's request for documents on the process for granting security clearances to staffers. But the House Oversight Committee in early February had already obtained the leaked documents that detail the entire process, from the spring of 2017 to the spring of 2018, on how both Kushner and Trump were ultimately granted their security clearances. Axios ABC's Ali Dukakis, Chelsea Manning taken into custody for refusing to testify before secret grand jury 2020 watch NYT's asset Herndon, Elizabeth Warren proposes breaking up tech giants like Amazon, the proposal which comes on the same day MS. Warren will hold a rally in Long Island City. The Queen's neighborhood that was to be home to a major new Amazon campus calls for the appointment of regulators who would unwind tech mergers that illegally undermine competition, as well as legislation that would prohibit platforms from both offering a marketplace for commerce and participating in that marketplace. The announcement is sure to reverberate from New York to Silicon Valley. Pressure for elected officials to place additional oversight on megatech companies has been building for months, particularly after revelations that companies such as Facebook may have violated customer privacy agreements. Ms. Warren is also sending a political warning shot across the Democratic primary field, where decisions on how much to embrace or reject Silicon Valley and its wealthy donors could become an important dividing line among candidates. NYT. Her medium post Gabby R. Advisors urge Trump to defer 2020 rallies. Trump's advisors are still hoping he will capitalize on his incumbency by largely sticking to official events in private, no cameras fundraisers for the next several months, according to three sources familiar with his campaign, one of whom said the president is making a conscious effort to rise above the Democratic scrum. Politico trade wars Adam Basuti, WH official, much work to be done for China deal, no in-person meetings set The Guardian's John Swain in New York, Trump inauguration took money from shell companies tied to foreigners, The Guardian has identified the creators of three obscure firms that contributed money to Trump's inaugural committee. The three companies each gave $25,000 to Trump's inaugural fund. At least one of the contributions was made for a foreign national who appears ineligible to make political donations in the U.S. The Guardian Afternoon read NYT Stacy Cowley and Erica Green, a college chain crumbles, and millions in student loan cash disappears, when the Education Department approved a proposal by Dream Center, a Christian nonprofit with no experience in higher education, to buy a troubled chain of for-profit colleges. Skeptics warned that the charity was unlikely to pull off the turnaround it promised. What they didn't foresee was just how quickly and catastrophically it would fail. Barely a year after the takeover, dozens of Dream Center campuses are nearly out of money and may close as soon as Friday. More than a dozen others have been sold in the hope they can survive. The problems, arising amid the Trump administration's broad efforts to deregulate the for-profit college industry, began almost immediately after Dream Center acquired the schools in 2017. NYT Swamp Watch WAPO's Philip Bump, sustain the swamp. Hundreds of lobbyists swim through Trump's administration, data provided to the Post by the liberal organization American Bridge 21st Century identifies over 350 individuals who've worked as lobbyists who currently work in the administration, have worked in it or have been nominated to serve in Trump's administration. Cumulatively, they've represented more than 2,800 companies at one point or another.
Nearly 200 of them now served or have been nominated to serve on divisions of government that they once lobbied. W8 Bo tomorrow at South by Southwest join Anna and Jake in Austin for a social lunch followed by a playbook exchange with Sen. Maisie Hirano, D Hawaii, starting at 12.20 p. M.RSVP. Daniel is participating in two panels, at 11 a. M. He's a panelist on tech and populism at a crossroads, a new era with Robbie Mook and Samantha Dravis, moderated by Alex Slater. More info. At 5 p.m., he's on a panel called Politics and Governing in Today's Polarized Climate with Nikki Kristoff and Heather King, moderated by David Helfenbein. More info and on Sunday, Jake and Anna will interview House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, R. California. At 2p.m.as part of the Conversations About America's Future series, which is a partnership between South by Southwest and the Texas Tribune. More info TV tonight Bob Costa will sit down with Axios Jonathan Swan, Vice's Shauna Thomas. Bloomberg's Joshua Green and The New Yorker's Susan Glasser at 8 p. M. on PBS Washington Week. Media Watch John McCormick is now Washington correspondent for National Review. He previously wrote for The Weekly Standard. Variety's Brian Steinberg. CBS News considers anchor changes for CBS This Morning spotted, John Kelly at Dulles. Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue and Mary Ruck Perdue at My Fair Lady at the Lincoln Center Theater in New York on Thursday night. Spotted at a British Embassy reception Thursday for women in the 116th Congress, British Ambassador Kim Darroch and Lady Vanessa Darroch, Christine Lagarde, Justice Stephen Brayer and Joanna Hare Brayer, Reps. Debbie Dingell, T. Mitch, Doris Matsui, D. California. Annie Custer, DN.H, Susan Delbean, D. Wash. And Debbie Lusco, R. Arizona, Kellyanne Conway, Penny Mordaunt. Karen Pierce, Maureen Dowd, Ann Stock, Anita McBride, Melanie Verver, Sally Gwynn, Susan Blumenthal, Kathleen Kennedy Townsend, Francesca Craig, Jane Harmon, Emily Lenzler, Katie Kay, Andrea Mitchell, Molly Ball, and Margaret Brennan. Transitions White House Arrival Lounge Stuart Young is now Special Assistant to the President and Director of International Initiatives and Outreach, heading Women's Global Development and Prosperity Initiative Policy and Engagement for Ivanka Trump's office. She was previously Deputy Assistant USTR for Intergovernmental Affairs. Bari Rabif has left Ivanka's office and is now special advisor to the Assistant Secretary for Education and Cultural Affairs. Juliet Guerra will be Director of Media Relations at the National Automobile Dealers Association. She previously worked at the Herald Group. Stacy Day is joining American Airlines as Senior Specialist of Communications. She previously was director of media at the U.